because yes. I'd like to give you a formal warning. Before. Yes, sir. And we'll allow the, if you do have members come, we will but, allow them to leave before they're cited. Yes, sir. If they decide not to is when they will be cited. Yes, sir. Hey, I respect, I, hey, I love authority. Well, you get an uh, uh, order from the government. Yeah. Your, your rights are suspended. No, the government. Our right don't come from authority. It comes from the Bible. So the authority does not have the, the right over the, the Constitution. We're talking about the Constitution law. The First, Second Amendment, the U.S. Constitution that was given to us by our forefathers. Tate Reed can't give, take it away. Mayor Eric Simmons can't take it away, nor the police officer. Meanwhile, another church in Greenville whose drive-in service was also interrupted by the police is now suing the city. Attorneys representing Temple Baptist Church are accusing the local government of overstepping its authority, saying, quote, in Greenville, you can be in your car at a drive-in restaurant, but you can't be in your car at a drive-in church service. That's not only nonsensical, it's unconstitutional, too. It's our case here. There's no one better to weigh in on this than our constitutional law expert and criminal defense attorney, Alan Dershowitz. Mr. Dershowitz is also a Harvard Law professor and author of the book, Guilt by accusation. What's your take on this whole issue, sir? Well, I think we have to balance. We have to accommodate. The Constitution is not a suicide pact. Uh, it doesn't necessarily permit everything that might spread the virus. It seems to me, and I don't know enough about maybe the medical aspects of this, but having a drive-in church service where people who are together in the same house are together in the same car and don't get out of the car seems like a reasonable accommodation to me that the government should not be able to stop. On the other hand, 1,200 people gathering in a church, uh, even trying to separate and wear masks, sounds to me not reasonable. Uh, we conducted our Seder by Zoom. Uh, it was a compromise, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't hug my grandchildren. Uh, I couldn't hide the afikomen and have somebody find it. Uh, we couldn't share a meal together, but <clears throat> we had a wonderful Zoom Seder it was just as uh, meaningful as any Seder that we've had in the past. So I think that uh, we have to make accommodations and make sure that both the Constitution is satisfied with its right of free speech and right of assembly and right of practice of religion, and also that we're protected against any kind of uh, spread of the virus. It's a hard balance to strike, but we have to all work together to try to strike it. You know, also a big story out of Michigan where stay-at-home orders are, are now banned as far as like visiting friends and going from One house to house. One to another. Yes. Yeah. Is this allowed? That is allowed. Uh, going from house to house can be dangerous. Um, um, <clears throat> and I think the state has the reasonable power to stop people from taking any steps that uh, transmit the disease as long as is it's that a temporary. temporary power sir is that that temporary <laughs> based on the situation or is that uh, everlasting oh no it's temporary give you an example we have hurricanes uh and tornadoes on our coasts and governors order people to leave their homes and go to shelters those have always been upheld um we have uh, the Constitution permits emergency measures. Constitution, as Justice Goldberg said, is not a suicide pact. He was basically paraphrasing Thomas Jefferson, who said sometimes you have to compromise immediate rights in order to achieve long term goals. We do it during wartime. Uh, this is not wartime, but this is probably the greatest crisis we have faced as a country since the Civil mm -hmm. War. More than the Second World War, we were never really at risk of being invaded in the Second World War. We fought for liberty and justice. But this one is really serious. Mm -hmm. And governors, presidents, legislatures have to be given some discretion as long as it's temporary. There has to be sunset provisions on everything. It ends on a day certain. It has to be renewed. It can't be broader than the need. And it has to be reasonable. And I think if we follow those rules... Uh, we can accommodate uh, both the Constitution and the public health needs okay. and, and fight this virus together. Um, we've seen a, kind of the battle going on right now between the president and Dr. Fauci. Uh, I'll ask the simple question, and, and I'm sure you know the details and the constitutionality of it. Can he fire Fauci? I don't mean from a task force, but from his positions. First, he should not. Uh, Fauci is a great man, and he's neutral and objective and has real credibility. Look, he grew up in Brooklyn, just a mile away from me. How could he be anything but 
<laughs> Terrific. We're about amazed. We actually played on competing basketball teams at about the same time. He was a great basketball player. I was a mediocre basketball player. But I'm a Fauci fan, and I think that he should not fire him. Does he have the legal right to do it? Probably he does. But just because you have the right doesn't make it right. Okay. Alan Dershowitz, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time.